Hey guys, it's Ryan and we're doing a podcast style. So you know what that means? This is another episode of five reasons today, five reasons to buy the new iPad pro. Let's do it. So the new 2020 iPad pro, is it worth buying it or upgrading to it? Well, kinda. So it's really not a massive upgrade. Uh, it's very much, uh, you know, it's still got the same form factor other than a couple of cameras on the back. And uh, the internals are basically the same. We found out the other day that the A12Z chip that it has is the A12X chip with extra graphic scores turned on. And that's really the biggest uh, difference with the power. Uh, there's also, you know, a couple of other things, but we'll get into that in just a minute. So like I said, it's still the same form factor as the previous generation. Uh, you still have the USB-C, you still have the phenomenal speakers, the four speakers around the edge. You still got the data connectors on the back that'll connect to your peripherals. And so you pretty much have everything from the previous generation on this new one. But with that out of the way, let's jump into why this iPad might just make you jump into the iPad Pro life. So reason number one is the new cameras. So the past model had a single 12 megapixel camera, and this one also has that 12 megapixel, but is a wide lens, and then has an additional 10 megapixel ultra wide lens, which if that's gonna persuade you, you know who you are, uh, who's, who needs to take pictures with their iPad. It's always a little funky to be holding an iPad and taking a picture. Let's just, let's just be honest. Uh, it's more uh, culturally, culturally accepted these days to just use your phone. Everybody's got their phone out filming or taking photos. It's a little interesting to be uh, holding up a massive iPad and taking a photo or video. So whether you are a designer or um, a contractor or somebody who needs to be able to take a picture of an entire work site or something similar to that, uh, or if you're an artist and you want to take kind of a, a landscape and, and manipulate it in uh, Photoshop, something like that, that's where you could really see this being effective. Otherwise, you're probably not going to be enticed by that one. So let's move on to the second one, shall we? So the second reason is that LiDAR scanner, and it uh, finds a home right next to the other two cameras. While augmented reality is pretty cool in practice, it still feels a little gimmicky to me. I haven't found a practical reason to use it yet, at least in my life, but that's me, right? I don't really need that. Uh, with that being said though, the iPad Pro is probably the best medium to develop a scanner like that or implement that scanner into because it is used in so many different professions uh, where a LiDAR scanner can be useful. So that may not be your cup of tea, but if you like that augmented reality stuff and uh, find that that's a feature that you would want, by all means, this is the one to get. So number three is that new A12Z chip. And like I said earlier, and it has been confirmed in the last few days that it is just the A12X chip with a few extra graphics cores turned on. Uh, that can be useful to some. I think that uh, especially game developers are going to be able to utilize those extra graphics cores, you know, to the nth degree. They, they always max this stuff out, it's great. And uh, you can do that with this because it's a it's an arm chip and it's everything's integrated within that chip so you're you're able to optimize the, uh, pretty much everything that has to do with your graphics and your your coding and everything to make it function at its highest so those extra graphics cores will probably help in the long run with the with the gamers and I think once they bump it up to the a13 chip and you know subsequent releases after that, then we'll really start to see even more um, graphic intense games come to the iPad. Now, the fourth reason is kind of a, just bear with me for a minute. It's, it's kind of a mixture between the software and the hardware. So, uh, you know, Apple is very good at this because they manufacture both. They're in charge of both so they can optimize their hardware for their software and vice versa. So, of course, the big, item announced alongside of this iPad was that new uh, Magic keyboard and trackpad and the official launch of the 
mouse support or trackpad support. And of course, this gets you probably closest to a real computer that an iPad has ever been. Even though they've touted it from the beginning, this is truly as close as it's ever been. So the, the reason I put this on the list is because these features were developed in conjunction with the new iPad. And there are so many things, so many innovations that happen because things are developed side by side. And Apple has been doing this for years. Multiple things have always have been developed side by side and released at the same time. Uh, and then uh, had that support through the life cycle of those products. So they were able to innovate alongside of bringing out something. So where the iPad Pro, the 2020 iPad Pro probably, you know, it's not too big of a spec bump for uh, as compared to the previous generation. But as they were developing this new iPad, they also developed this uh, magic keyboard and trackpad together so that they can be released together and complement one another. Uh, but you know, the previous previous generation will work too. Just just keep that on. The previous generation will work with this new thing too. So don't, yeah. Now, before we get into the last reason on why you should buy an iPad Pro or upgrade to an iPad Pro, I just want to say that the first four, they're really not that big of reason to upgrade to the new iPad Pro. If you need a LiDAR scanner and you feel that it will increase your productivity, this is the way to go. But for the most part, you're probably gonna be just fine with the previous version iPad Pro. And now with that out of the way, this kind of brings us to the fifth and final reason why you may want to upgrade to the new iPad Pro. So reason number five, and this is the category that I find myself in and you probably do too when you look at iPads like this. Uh, if you have an older iPad and you want to step it up and get into a new iPad, this is a great option. And although, you know, if you want to save a few extra bucks, you can always go for the previous gen because that's going to be going down a little bit in price, usually 100 to $150, which is very, very nice. And for me, the most recent iPad I have that I keep looking down here is this guy, which is an iPad mini second gen. And I've loved this thing. I've put this through so many precarious places that uh, it's, it's, it's been rock solid. It's starting to slow down a little bit, but you know, I like it. It's pretty nice. So in conclusion, is the new iPad Pro in 2020 worth buying or worth upgrading to? It depends on your circumstances. Sure, if you've got the money, go for it. It's a killer product. All iPads are. There's nothing in the market that does it better than the iPad. And I know I've tried many of them. And the iPad, of course, has been the market leader pretty much since it was announced. And because Apple makes both the hardware and the software, it is rock solid. And yeah, the older versions like my iPad mini second gen here, can get a little slow that's that's okay it still does what i needed to do and uh in the future hopefully we can upgrade this guy well thanks for watching guys that was the first episode of five reasons if you liked it hit that like button uh subscribe and share this with your friends also get the bell on that'll notify you when we upload a new video maybe another one like this soon so that is it for today and i'll see you guys next time <laughs>